This week's school update made possible by Community State Bank and Cordry Greit's Funeral Home. All right, this is episode two, two. two of the Dr. Wood Show. It seems like yeah. I need a big echo. We should, we should. Yeah, I'll work on that. Although I was told last week I wasn't a real doctor. So, oh. yeah, it was pretty, Ooh, it was pretty was, humbling was after pretty all bad. the money and time I spent wow. to get the, the, the letters. But that's okay. That's all right. I'm, 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 I'm accepting of that. Okay. All right. First thing on the list is contact the school if you're wanting virtual. Right. So one of the things that the uh, statewide everyone has been tasking with is to provide a completely online option to students that might have some angst, anxiety, concerns, uh, challenges, they're scared, they're uncertain, whatever there may be the reason, but they just don't feel comfortable comfortable going back to uh, the traditional, you know, come to the school and get books and stuff type of uh, approach. So uh, if, if you are wanting that for your child, please start giving us that information now so that we can get prepared uh, as opposed to finding at the last minute that we, we need to provide the content and stuff. Because there's a huge difference between virtual kids, those are kids who will be on a completely different curriculum, will use a more of a canned courseware uh, product like Edument, Edmentum, Edgenuity, uh, something like that, uh, as opposed to if a student is just home sick for two weeks, maybe on quarantine or whatever, that student that is a distance education student uh, is still getting Hennessy content using the Hennessy teacher, whereas if you're full virtu full-time virtual, it would be a little different. So if you're wanting to go full-time virtual, we're going to provide that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm going to tell you, come to school. Uh, but we can provide the other if you choose not to. Okay. Which it, I don't want you to do. Before we get really rolling here, is there a, like a central contact number other than you for the, all of this kind of stuff, like a main well, phone number? Well, the, the principal for each uh, grade level. So if you have a pre-kindergarten, kindergarten student, contact Ms. Skuvenek. Okay. If you have a first through fifth grade student, contact Mr. Crosswhite. Okay. If you have a middle school with sixth, seventh, and eighth, contact Mr. Um, Mr. Uh, Means. And if you have a, a, a 9 through 12, contact uh, Ms. Uh, Avila. Okay. And, and all of those numbers are on the website. All are on the website, absolutely. Call, call the, the main 405-853-4321, uh, and then you can be directed to the, the different okay. school. One because, number will get you where you need to go. Yeah, the, you'll, we have a human being that will pick the phone up and put you where you need to be. And the reason there's not one simple number is because it's not the same pre-K to 12th grade. Sure. It's going to be different yeah, depending different, on the site. Different departments. And exactly. Sure. And okay. so, again, the, 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 that's how they're breaking up, though. Okay. All right. Bus routes. I understand you're changing yeah. up the bus routes a the, little. So, uh, the, in the past, we've kind of had a, I think they call it the town route, and I may not have the exact terminology. So, uh, the main thing I want everyone to understand is if this causes undue hardship, please call the school and talk to us so that we can provide a solution before it, everyone gets upset. But to, to meet one of our goals of uh, social distancing, uh, we are not picking anyone up between 51st, Highway uh, 51, right. and 7th Street mm -hmm. for your north and south <coughs> boundaries, mm -hmm. and Cemetery Road to Mitchell Road for your east and west boundaries. Nobody so, in uh, that area. <coughs> essentially the, city limits. City limits. Ex okay. It's exactly city limits. Uh, you know, and it would be great if you are planning on driving your kiddos to school, let us know so we can expand that possibly if a lot of parents are choosing to drive their kiddos to school, which is completely understanding. Let us know because what we're trying to accomplish is to provide social distancing on the bus route. Um, there's some other things that we've gotten so um, used to doing, like maybe just calling the school and saying, hey, let Jack get on uh, with my son so they can come have a slumber party. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we can't just let random riders on the bus. They, they, they have to stick with the riders that are assigned to that bus because every, every family group is going to have assigned seating. Mm -hmm. So we can't just, again, randomly put people on the bus. Again, I know it's a, an accommodation that, that's going to affect people, but you know, we just need everyone to be a little understanding that that's the situation we're in right now. Sure, but it all comes down to communicate. Absolutely. If it's a problem, communicate, then you communicate, just communicate. Call. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Again, if if there's a an un, you know again, I know there's a lot of parents that are going to work at six in the morning, mm -hmm. and you got eight, nine, ten year old kids having to get themselves on the bus, and 
we, we understand all that. And we're here to try to, to help that out. But we're trying to balance what is best for everybody through the social distancing, the masks, the, city, the, the uh, family groupings, and all that, as opposed to you know, what each individual kiddo needs. So again, call us so we can work things out. Awesome. Closed campus. That sounds dun dun dun. dun, dun, dun. <laughs> We're all shut down, and, and quite honestly, it, it was a, a, a topic that was brought up that's being discussed. No, nothing more than that at this time. Uh, we did want to let everyone know that that we're changing up the way the lunches are going to be served, like elementary, uh, early early childhood, which would be the pre-kindergartners through the eighth graders. They'll only get one option for their lunch. We're not going to have multiple options. We're not going to have the salad bar. We're not going to have the fruit bar. Uh, available where it's just come serve yourself. Uh, we will have self-contained uh, fruit mm -hmm. and self-contained salad, uh, individually packaged type stuff. But for elementary, the pre-kindergarten through eighth grade, we're going to set those meals out on the tables, so they won't get in mm -hmm. line and and stand in line. You know, back to back, mm -hmm. we're going to have the lunches all spread out, and there'll be every other seat. Mm -hmm. And okay. so that, that when they walk in, takes away the line thing. Takes away the line. Okay. Cuts down yeah. on the time. Uh, we're going to stagger the lunch period. Think times. of it like a restaurant. Very much Ooh, like a, yeah. like a uh, psychic lunch okay. provision. So they we just like know what you want. You, <laughs> you actually don't have a choice. But okay. then we're also uh, for nine through twelve, they will still have three options. Okay. Uh, one will be a hot meal, and they'll be in a self-contained. Everything's going to be in in their own containers. And, and so you'll have the lunch, then you'll have a fruit, then you'll have a salad. They'll all be in their own containers. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, um, again, you, you'll have a choice of uh, maybe a hot dog, a, a hamburger, and then a hot meal. So high school kids will still get more of an, of an option. Uh, we're still kind of uh, ferreting through the breakfast, how we're going to prepare it, not how we're going to necessarily prepare it, but how that's going to be distributed because that's not as controlled and not as in the same time frame as the, uh, the lunches are. Again, so we are still trying to meet the, 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 the um, needs for some variety but contain that with getting kids in and out of the cafeteria quicker so they can get outside recess where it'll be gotcha. uh, a little more spread out. So again, still working on the exact details, but that's kind of a, uh, the now, nuts and bolts. The, you know, the closed campus makes me think of the seniors and that yeah. can't leave. The, is that I, sort I, of I tried to glaze over that so I wouldn't get any questions I'm about sorry, that, but <laughs> that has been brought up. Do we, do we want students to be uh, leaving campus, being gone for 30 minutes to an hour, whatever the lunch period time is, and then coming back, uh, do we want to stop that? Or, or is it better that the, some of the kids get away and do get to go to a lunch? We, we, we're working on it. It's just Still something that's in, it's, it's a topic for discussion is all it is at this point right now. But it, it is some discussion that we were, we were having on, on how do we want to manage that and do we want to continue. Because uh, each one has its benefits and its, its, its limits. So uh, something that's been brought up, again, Got questions, contact. I've got a couple really good emails, uh, asked some really good questions, and I hope that grows and that, that continues. Yeah, I was surprised. I got, I actually got a couple, and you got several here that we'll talk about here in right. a minute. So communication is good. Uh, remember, email Dr. Woods or me if you feel right. need to about questions. All right. Absolutely. Next thing is uh, I, uh, one parent identified as primary. So it, that goes back to, vert, to our uh, enrollment process. It's all online now. We've got a, a product uh, through, it's called Wingage. Uh, everybody will have a login, uh, but we need you to uh, contact Renee Curry. Mm -hmm. uh, she's the one handing those out, and we need one specific primary uh, parent that everything will funnel through. That'll be kind of what we use to identify the, the family groups, um, and we really need everyone. I think I said we really, really need parents to have an email. We would prefer an email, a, a, a Google mail, a Google G mail G Gmail. Mail. Uh, address because uh, it, it just works easiest with our software. With your system, sure. So um, again, the, we're starting enrollment July 13th. Be looking for communications from the scale from the the school. Uh, some of that stuff will come from Wingage and uh, Renee Curry, R E Curry at hps.k12.ok.us. Will you stick that on there? I'll put that, that point? on the screen right here. Uh, at the bottom. Yep. Okay. Uh, and, <clears throat> and again, look on the the um, schools. Uh, website for videos on how to do videos on how to enroll uh, and then again we'll still have the ability for someone to come in get help with the language get help with the language uh, the, the, the you know the the profession specific address uh, um, language we use in school speak a lot of times oh I, I see what you're so, saying not not 
not language, but yeah, the terminology. The terminology. Yes. Yeah, that gotcha. we we use a lot of education speak sometimes, and we just Acronyms. think everybody, yeah, yeah everybody okay. should know it. But <laughs> um, again, we will help you do that. And, and again, hopefully, most people will be able to align to um, enroll online. And again, just suppress the suppress the spread mm -hmm. by not having large groups at one time in a, in the same place. Great, non-essential visitors. So. Does that mean I can't we, come visit anymore? You, you cannot, oh. um, but we we would allow you to via to visit uh, via Zoom. Oh, or um, I think Ju uh, Todd has been using Google Google Mail. Uh, is it Heats or not Heats? That's something else. Um, but what are the whatever the Google one is Meets Meets Meets. That's, that's the one that mm -hmm. I think that is uh, Microsoft. Google I think is like Google something. <laughs> Something yeah. to do with Google. Anyway. But uh, there, there'll be a lot of different ways that, that we hope we can still bring people in. Mm -hmm. So instead of us having someone come into the room, sit down and, and uh, physically being there and start reading a book, maybe you set up a Zoom meeting and you read with a parent, with oh, a I kiddo see that saying. way. Okay, so, so yeah, I understand. Not necessarily the guy delivering pizza, but the... Okay, we don't, we don't have any of those. So... Um, but that would be one that would apply for I, I, yeah. we we the folks that, that typically come in and help the teachers in the classroom gotcha. we're just not going to be able to allow people to come in and do that right at front the volunteers the volunteers like um or subject matter experts like uh, show and tell or maybe we, we've got somebody that was an astronaut and they want to come talk to the kids or the firemen when they come up or the, the you know the ambulance how we bring them in and let the kids get to know them a little bit we just can't do that at the first well, that may be something that'll change as the year goes on, sure. but as we start the year, we need to limit the number of folks that come into the facility. And it, it'll be those volunteers, but it also would be the the UPS guys. We're 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 taking those pizza deliveries. All come to a consi uh, one consistent place. Well, and that I mean, this here uh, ID and things like this. This is part of the the uh, improved security anyway, where right they you need to actually check in before you just yes. walk into the building. When you walk in and you know, if you're let come, cause like in early childhood, uh, there's a second set of doors you have to go through. Mm -hmm. So you're not always going to be let through that second set of doors, but they'll check an ID. If there's a reason for it, then we can still sure. uh, allow them to pass through. Got it. Absolutely. Okay. Did I miss anything on here? I think you got everything. Okay. I'm going to stick that in my stack. Take that over there. Okay. So now we have, I have one really fast. The other day I okay. was, I think I was visiting you and noticed that the daycare is under construction. Yes. Uh, Tell them what the daycare is, okay. where it is. So really the, the old admin building mm -hmm. or the old Eagle's Nest restaurant. Yep. That, drive in. really old. If, yes. If you okay. were, you know, were, were uh, took a burger there or not, but uh, that will be where the daycare uh, for school staff only. That is not a uh, community daycare it's that is just for our employees oh, and that's okay. again to have a uh, you know they have the opportunity to bring their little kiddos that will have a schedule the same as the the parents mm -hmm. so uh, that is a something that we just have found was a, a needed was that we had daycare facilities available so uh, Keith Dobbs doing a really nice job he does a lot of work for the school and he's the one that's in there he and his crew they're getting that ready to go and we have expect to have that in place so uh, Teachers, if you are hearing this for the first time or you're unsure, uh, we need you guys to go online and click on the video, or I sent you an email uh, that has a link so they can go in and you know mark who's going to bring their kiddos and who's not. So but, we get, I guess it was this one here. That was the first one. We got, we are, we are proud of you guys. We did a nice got job. a lot of really good, um, sincere questions. They weren't, yeah. you know, the usual ones we get yeah uh, and these are some really really good questions from some viewers that I guess this one was emailed to you right yes that okay was and the question is uh, what about masks in the hallway let's, okay. let's just we can do all of this at once sure masks in the hallway fever monitoring lunch and positive cases okay so the um, I may kind of do this in reverse order a little bit from the fact that when we look at the positive COVID cases we've had it's really contradictory to what we see on the, the, the local news, state and federal or national news, because we just haven't seen a, a great spread. So even when we had a, a, a situation where we had a, 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 an employee have a positive test case, nobody else uh, was infected. People who worked for a week solid uh, still was, were we, while we were unaware at the time, mm -hmm. uh, still they were worked very closely together and we had uh, no, no six people tested, 
zero positive case back back uh, came okay. back. Very good. So it, it it just it's again it's just c kind of confusing. Why would we have uh, the the results we're having locally that don't correspond to what we see on on the, again the news? Well, pretty um, much already addressed the lunch. Touch with how lunch. That's work. Yeah. Uh, and again, we would still. Uh, the only thing I'd say is please contact us as quick as we can. If you if you you're uncomfortable sending food uh, through the the regular program. Just, just let us know that, hey, we really don't want Johnny to eat a lunch. We're sending lunch with him. Anything you can provide us as a heads up really helps us in this environment. Communication. Communication, communication, communication. So, okay. And then um, we talk about the, the communication about what masks, how we're using masks in the hallway and the fever monitoring. And, and those are just a basic way, the, the basic things using CDC guidelines. That's, that's kind of whoever's using as the, the base level for mm -hmm. that. And so we're trying to meet those guidelines. And so we're expecting everybody when they're in a public area, mm -hmm. hallway, um, uh, through the, the, the cafeteria, um, just general spaces, you have a lot of different people in, wear a mask. If you're coming as a vendor, if you're coming as a volunteer, whatever, if you're, you're doing something for the school, wear a mask, even if you're not necessarily working with kids all the time. And then fever is monitoring is another tool that we use just to identify the potential for a communicable disease. We, we talk a whole lot about COVID, but uh, but we're really looking out for anything. Well, fever is a problem all the time. Exactly. It's not just about the COVID. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I always, we, we regularly have flu uh, season. Other schools have had to shut down. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had regular events where we've had our athletes go somewhere else Someone's toughed up, you know, bucked up for the team, mm -hmm. came sick, you know, the Michael uh, Jordan fever game where he scored 107 against somebody and, you know, was a hero for that. And we don't need you to be a hero. We need you to stay home and take, take care of yourself, mm -hmm. whether it's for COVID, uh, the flu, whatever the, the situation may be. Because, again, we're talking about any communicable disease. So the, the monitoring, the masks, those are all preventative tools we are using to keep our kids, our staff, our community safe and, and keep them healthy. And that kind of follows into the next one. Yep. And it is, uh, this is from another viewer. Thank you. Um, great, great questions. How, how about allowing fans to watch games? Okay, so super. Uh, the, the, the question uh, and the, the suggestions by this um, community member that w was commenting, uh, and I think whatever the, the things that they had suggested would be in any plan we came up with. But the thing uh, that I, I kind of hearken back to is back, back in the day, I, uh, I suffered from dandruff. And so I used uh, dandruff shampoo, mm -hmm. and then I didn't have dandruff any longer anymore. So I thought, well, that's great. I don't have dandruff. So I quit using the, hand, the, the, the shampoo, and the dandruff, dandruff came back. back. Okay. So the idea is just because we're not having cases, we still have to do the precautions so we don't have uh, a spread, and we can keep people coming to the, to the stands and to be part of the game. Well, it's important. And and. Just the size of the New Eagle Event Center lends itself to, you could spread out and not touch anyone. 1,800 for, seats. Yeah, I mean, it's enormous. So. And, and that's not the parents that will line up along the rails along the 180 degree perimeter of, yeah. the, of the, the dome, 67 feet up in the air. Yeah. Uh, the um, HVAC constantly circles the air. We've got fans. So uh, again, it, we're, we're doing everything we can to make that possible, but it's really, really going to take the fans. And we are going to move uh, two of the systems to the event center, mm -hmm. and we will do fever scans if you come into a game. If you would happen to test where you showed that you had uh, an elevated fever, please respect who all we're taking care of and, and maybe don't go to that game. We're going to be broadcasting it online. We're going to put up, an, maybe you're going to be putting up an FM station. We're going we're gonna to have yeah, opportunities. We're going to work really hard with the school and with our own equipment to try to broadcast as much of this as we can so you Absolutely. won't be missing out on anything. And it's been, crack, Jack's been such a great partner in this whole deal with this, the technology and stuff, really helping us being able to do that. So you won't have to miss a game. Mm -hmm. you, you may not be able to sit in the stand, may not enjoy some, you know, concession popcorn, but we really need everyone to cooperate with this because if we want to be in the stands with as fans, which are so important, it, it can affect a game by having people there cheering yeah. and, and the emotion and everything, the, the enthusiasm. So, but we really got everyone cooperating on this. Yep. So wear the mask, spread out, 
don't don't come scan sick. your fever don't come sick <clears throat> um again Good. pitch in and help us help us make this work all right uh this looks like your handwriting kids that, that, and staff that, counseling absolutely so uh tammy tillman is our uh is an lpc and our early childhood uh, first elementary counselor okay so we have been talked uh, and come, uh, come up with a plan that starting uh, July 15th, we are going to have counseling available for students and staff. Maybe you have a fear of, of coming back to school with what the potential could be. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you're, you, you have a compromised immune system and you're, you're concerned about that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so Tammy's working really hard to put together some uh, resources. It, it, it could be man i am so sick and tired of being locked up with my kids help me with some uh <laughs> ways to deal with them uh a wide topic tammy is great we have great counselors jill murray is another outstanding resource but um we're, we're providing that starting uh the 13th uh, 15th of july which will be next wednesday mm -hmm. and again the exact details are still being fleshed out because we don't know how it's going to be used it may be a couple hours a day. Mm -hmm. It may be a few hours other day. We just don't know. The demand will drive the, the, yes, absolutely. But the, the content will still be dealing with some of the things maybe students and staff have experienced over the, the, the summer mm -hmm. when they've not had access to counselors. We're providing that. So how do you be part of this or how do you? Uh, out, outstanding. So again, call that same number, the, the main school number, and we'll okay. get you hooked up with that. We're, we're still working out exactly where we're going to have it. Okay. Uh, there's a couple different possibilities. So once we get that narrowed down, we, uh, we, we'll have that starting next, uh, next week and maybe we'll have more details to put that out. But also, anytime you have questions, go to the school website, call the school, and you know, again, for the, for the principals uh, in their different areas, again, Stacy Skuvenek is the uh, early childhood principal. Uh, uh, Barry Crosswhite is the first through fifth grade. Matt Means is uh, six, seven, and eight, and Angela um, Avila. Uh, Avila. Yes, I just seen if you remembered. <laughs> you did a nice job. She is nine, nine through twelve. Uh, again, counsel, uh, catch uh, e any of them, and they'll help you get to where you need to. And that be. goes with anything. And call like the school. If, if you have questions, email Dr. Woods. I'll put his email yeah. address right here. Please and email. If you, um, if you want to email me, I'll have my email address right here. Yeah. You can you can e do that too. Emails preferred. Yep. Because it lets me get the stuff the stuff distributed to the right people, mm -hmm. and gives us time to respond in a, in a in a positive way that we can get you the information as opposed to you know a phone call which you know, it's just you know, kind of on the fly. Send me an email and we'll find the right people to answer the questions and get you the information that you need. Very very good. All right. In closing, I noticed the other day. I actually took a picture. I'll put the picture right here. The pre-K pre building, I don't know what you call it now, has a sign on it. Early it's, Learning Center, Early okay. Childhood Center. It was center. the building with no name. The no name. And now it does. It I does. Guess Mrs. Skuvenek did. Mrs. Skuvenek, Skuvenek took that uh, by the letters mm -hmm. and uh, put that up. Or she did not actually physically do the labor, <laughs> but she did. got it all lined out, and, and it, it's turned out to be a really, really nice Very building. Cool. Very, very uh, nice. We, we, we are blessed, again, not just always sunshine your way, but... Uh, Terrell Prince, he does really nice work, mm -hmm. and uh, he's doing some work in the lobby. I think you're going to like our uh, signs that identify the, the men's and women's restroom. Okay. It's going to be something that's not traditional, which you don't normally see. It's not going to be one of those deals where I really have to think, is this the men's or women's? So, so, so great question. We will actually have a sign that says men's okay, thank and you. women's that will be as there be as clear. well. Okay. But it will it will be kind of like subtitles. I hate guessing. Guess, uh, yes. This, no. no. Uh, what embarrassing not, that not could be. Yeah, it's exactly. Bad, so. bad outcome. All right. So that's about it for this week. Once again, emails if you need questions uh, answered. Next week, I'm going to try to see if we can get athletic director and football coach Paul Hicks on here to talk a little bit about the Absolutely. fall uh is it fall spot sports? Yes. Late summer and fall. Yeah, fall and like it would be uh, volleyball, girls softball, football, uh, cross country. I believe is in the fall as does, well. Does the new wrestling so, program fit into that? Or it'd that, be winter because winter and basketball are kind of considered winter sports. Gotcha. Um, okay. But but again, yeah, that that'll be a, a a great get, and hopefully we will have some guidance from OSSAA at that time. We still are kind still of flying blind. Yeah. Awesome. And again, we have kids playing right now in summer leagues and stuff and again without exposure or without spread so again i think that's encouraging mm -hmm. but again it's because 
We're taking the precautions. We're being careful. We need everyone to help us uh, continue to do that. Very good. That's it. Thanks, Jack. Thank you, Dr. Woods. See you next week. Absolutely. This week's school update made possible by Community State Bank and Cordry Wright's Funeral Home.